In the last video, we ran an npx create react app command on our terminal. Don't worry if you don't understand this command as of now. Just see if it ran successfully for you. If it was a success, it will show you that success created this and some things like this. So once you are done with this, we can now proceed further. In case you faced any, any issue with this particular command or any error came for you, feel free to put it in the comment section and I will have a look at those comments and try to help you out as soon as possible. Now, uh, coming on to that command, uh, if you go to that directory where you ran that command, you will see that the uh, there will be a new folder with the same name so now if you go inside that folder, you will see a bunch of code, a bunch of files and some, some random things that might not make any sense for uh, to you right now. But just do one thing, just open the terminal at this point, open the command prompt at this folder and open your favorite text editor. For me, it's code, VS code. It, for you, it can be Sublime or Atom or VS code or any other text editor which you like. Just open this folder in your favorite text editor. You will see a lot of things. So today we are going to discuss what Create React app does for us and what is JSX. So firstly, discussing what Create React app is. Basically, Create React app gives us a boilerplate so that we can start coding Re our react application directly to set up a react application it takes a little bit of work because you have to set up some things like you have to set up the transpiler you have to set up bundler i know it won't, it will not make any sense as much sense right now but don't worry just see this video till the end and i can bet you that it's going to make a lot of sense after this video so yes if you did want to read more about create react app uh, you can go to their website which is create react app dot dev Again, as simple as that, what Create React App does is nothing but give you a boilerplate which you can use to start coding at this point itself instead of doing any configurations manually. But yes, before going further, I want you to do one more thing here. I want you to install one more NPM library which we are going to use to actually use this startup name generator. How to do that? If you are an npm user like me, you can simply do npm install and this command, this name of this library. So I'll just paste it here and I'll just run this command. Meanwhile, meanwhile, as it installs, I will tell you how the code is structured in Create React App. One more thing before we jump onto the code, which is configuring Prettier. I really, really use Prettier in almost all my uh, projects because it can help you save a lot of time in indentation and all those styling things. So to integrate Prettier, you will have to make this basic configuration. You'll just have to uh, go to your project and create a new file, which is .prettierrc. Don't worry if you don't understand it at this point of time. Basically, Prettier is nothing but a, a, a sort of helper which sort of saves us some time in, in styling our code. And you can read much more about Prettier or you can even skip this Prettier integration thing uh, completely because it's completely optional and I just uh, love having a Prettier set up in my system. If you want, you can completely skip it. Skip it. So just one more step before we finalize this. All you need to do is now open the uh, user settings of Visual Studio Code. It might be something else if you use a different text editor. For me, it's Visual Studio Code. So I just open user settings and I'll just search for matte code on save. So now it's ticked. Make sure it is ticked. And basically what it's going to do for us is I don't need to care about styling of my code anyways. Now all I need to do is write the code and press save. Once I save my code, it will automatically indent and style my code for me. So Prettier is very, very helpful. So now let's see what Create React App does for us. Basically, let's let's first of all see the structure of files it created. First of all, there is this node modules directory. Node modules is basically a set of all the dependencies that our app uses. You don't probably want to look at the this folder. You can very well ignore this folder because it's just the just the set of dependencies that your app is using and more or less our app is basically using uh, more or less two dependencies which is react and the startup name generator react in turns uses a lot of dependencies internally but yeah uh, that it's not something we should 
pretty very very much care about so yes now let's see the package.json in every react project or uh, more or less in every node project you can see this file this common file which is package.json package.json is basically the information about the project how that project is structured the name of the project the version of the project the dependencies that the project is having the scripts which are we can run for example the start script the build script and so on and also have the dev dependencies and much more uh, information about it <clears throat> then the readme file which we can pretty much delete everything and just type it our uh, name which is name of the project which is name it a uh, very cool project or something like that a uh, very cool project so yes now coming back so first of all we discussed what is node modules now let's see what is inside public folder basically public folder contains these files which are which we don't even need to touch these are the public files the index.html in our whole project we are not even going to touch index.html or uh, except only two times where we uh, actually want to change the name of the uh, title so title is mentioned in the in the index.html i'll just make it name it and another thing is we just need to have some external fonts included so i'll just change it then but apart from that we are not even going to touch the index.html all we need to do will be present in the src folder so again public folder is nothing but our public assets which includes uh, the logo and all and the in the index.html file which we are not going to touch in our project then before going on to the src let's let's discuss about the remaining things so there's this package log json and yarn log uh, dot log file which is basically again the information about the dependencies which we are using read me we have done git ignore i hope that you already know what a git, git git ignore file is git ignore files basically ignores the files that files or folders that we mention here uh, from the version control so yes now let's jump on to the src directory src directory contains all the code that we are going to write and i am going to show you something really really weird can you tell me what is this this looks like javascript but there's some html in it and then again this javascript this javascript at top so what the hell is this let's have a look at it this is basically called jsx it's you can say it's a combination of javascript and html and and so on so it looks something like this the the weird syntax looks something like this const element is equal to h1 uh, hello world so the right hand side of this this particular expression seems to be html but the left hand side seems to be javascript what in the world is this this is called a jsx basically jsx is a what react uses to actually enable us write our html code inside the javascript files through that we can create these components these components are going to be various classes or functions and using those components we can return the html which is going to be rendered on our screen so yes i am going to discuss all of that in this video series stay tuned and i think uh, let's let's just finally discuss this app structure and then we will be good to go so first of all let's uh, just open the command prompt again and do this one thing uh, this npm and then start all you need to do is npm start and then it will start the react project on your local host once you do that it will automatically open localhost 3000 and run your react project so this is the boilerplate which and uh, which create react app gives us in this boilerplate the in the entry point is index.js in the index.js <coughs> it's nothing much but we can delete all the unnecessary things like this and probably all the css files don't worry about this i am going to tell you everything about what is a component how is a component structured and so on we can for now just ignore these things i can cover these things in probably some other project uh, the tests and all but yes for now let's have a look at this only so basically uh, let's just let's delete index.css as well so the entry point of our react app is index.js file 
So this file is nothing but a, a react dom dot render and app component. So let me explain this to you very quickly. I know this video has become a little bit long. Please forgive me for that. But yes, um, let's just finish the create react app mystery things once and for all. And then finally, in the next video, we can jump on to the actual coding part. So yes, what it's doing is react dom is a library which provides us this render method and inside this render method, it ex expects the first one to be a react component and the second one to be the HTML, the select HTML selector where we are going to render this component. So if we go back in our public directory inside the index.html, you will see that there is a div with the ID root. So basically what this render method is doing it's taking in this app components that's why just remember when i told you that we are going to have a sort of container element container component which i'm going to call as the app component so this is the uh, con the bigger biggest comp uh, container component so inside every every component is going to be contained inside this app component so yes, very, very, very simple. This is going to be the outermost parent element and everything will be inside our app component. So yes, this app component, what this render method will do, it will take in this app component here, this bigger app component, and it will render it to this path. This path is what? This is the root div. It will, it will render that particular component inside that div. Now we can safely close index.html because there's nothing more to explore in index.html. And now let's have a look at our app.js. What is this and uh, how is this structured? Very simple, this is called the JSX. It's a simple function, very simple. It's a, a function named app, which is returning some HTML. It might look weird to you, but that's the whole concept in React. We can make components using JSX. JSX is nothing but HTML inside JavaScript where we can return some HTML from our JavaScript. But the sad part is that our browser cannot understand JSX. Our browser does not understand JSX. And that is why we used create react app. Basically what we do is uh, we write our code in JSX, which is HTML inside JavaScript. And then we transpile that code into browser understandable JavaScript, the normal JavaScript. And once that is done, then we show it on the screen. If we were not using create react app, we would have to set up that whole transpiling thing using Babel. You can explore more about Babel on Google and you can explore more about JSX to JS conversion. If we were not using create react app, we would have to manually set up Babel to transpile our JSX into browser understandable JavaScript. So let's end this video here. We, what we learned a quick recap. We basically learned how create react app structures our application and what all files are there. And then we also discussed what is JSX and why are we using create react app on it. There's one more reason because it also includes the bundler, which is actually when we build our application, it, we might have a lot of JavaScript files at the end of the day, it's going to build uh, bundle everything down to a single JavaScript and a single CSS file, which is going to make it super good. So yes, create react apps does everything for us so that we don't have to care about setting up our dev environment. So yes, I hope that this is clear to you. JSX is clear to you. And in the next video, we are directly going to jump up to make our first component, our app component our, and our header component. I am super excited for it. See you in the next video. Bye.